Ladies and this girl, Andy here, author of the best Tinder guide on the internet and guy who's never worked in a bomb disposal unit. This is the Kill Your and Loser show. Let's fucking go. Joined by you. Hi. Hi. I was thrown off by that intro. Thanks. It was a good intro. It was the best intro ever. So we're going to talk about talking to everybody in the entire world and how the entire world is your friend. Mm. So this came up in a uh, group coaching call that I had a couple of days ago. And basically the question one of the guys asked was, I want to go out and talk to women, but I always feel like every time when I step outside, I'm starting from scratch. It feels like I'm not warmed up. And he basically said, do you think I should do some warm ups before I tell, you know, some girls that they're cute and that I want to stick my thing inside their thing and, you know, inside their other thing and then lick that thing and then, you know, stick that other one on there and like do the sex stuff. Right. And so what I said to him is, why are you doing warm ups? Why aren't you just talking to everybody when you go outside anyway? And so it started this big whole discussion where he said, like, Andy, do you talk to everybody? And I thought I would get you on here Mm -hmm. to ask you the question verify do you talk to everybody yeah because no one will believe anything unless a woman agrees with it don't think that's true. So you're the token woman but yeah i thought we'd talk about like how i talk to everybody outside and smile at them and so yeah you absolutely do i think you are always somebody that will like make a comment about something or mm-hmm. start up a random chat with somebody in the lift or at a cafe mm-hmm. overall you're very sociable and i think that's actually something that i picked up on yeah, you have. Being yeah. with you. I'm a lot more and like way more toned down than you, like dialed down. Mm-hmm. I certainly don't strike up conversation as much as you do, but it's more having been around you and having that energy and seeing that it's actually a really nice thing. Like yeah. you end up having some really nice interactions and having nice little memories or moments that you wouldn't have otherwise mm-hmm. if you didn't talk to people and give yourself that opportunity. Yeah, you're essentially showing yourself like the whole point of this is not just a warm up so that you can go and talk to women. That's almost like a nice little side effect. Mm. It's to show yourself that the rest of the world is your friend. I I did a coaching call as well um, a couple of weeks ago. You know, the, the $150, the little cheap, easy 30 minute calls that I've been doing for some people. And I did one of those. And this guy basically said, you know, he said the statement, I feel like over the last two years, the world has gotten a lot more cold and people aren't as friendly. And I bet a lot of you listening will go like, yeah, are you kidding me? Yes. Over the last three years, the world has gotten more cold. People are not as friendly, you know, with all the COVID and the lockdowns and all of that crap, the world is much less friendly. And I said, is that true? Because that just isn't my experience. No, if anything, like, especially being where we are and moving and meeting a bunch of new people, I've thought many times with how nice people are Mm -hmm. and how friendly they are. And I don't... And often in my head, I phrase that as people are really nice here, but I don't think it's exclusive to here. I think it's just a fact that people are are nice. And the world is a mirror. I talk about this all the time. People are nice to us because I'm nice to them or we're nice to them. Mm. If you walk around with a smile on your face, people will see that and they can't help but smile. That's what we do. A smile is infectious. And then you're going to say, wow, everybody smiles at me. The world is really nice. If you walk around with the story in your head that the world is unkind and that people are cold and that no one's friendly, guess what? That's going to be mirrored back at you because you're not smiling. Mm -hmm. And so it's that old Byron Katie quote where she says, if you want other people to do something, you go first, you fucking hypocrite. She doesn't say that last bit. She's a little (laughs) sweetie. But if you want something, you go first. You're the man or hell, any women listening, you're the woman. Do it. You go first. You want the rest of the world to be nice to you. You go first. And just striking up conversations with people and these don't even have to be amazing conversations by the way like i'm not talking i'm not saying you have to be a social super social person Mm -hmm. i wasn't at the start it's a skill that you learn and improve but just you're in an elevator with someone you say hi how's your day going that's it and they go good and you go great they go you just talk to one person Mm -hmm. they're at a cafe and she gets you the coffee and you say hey i really appreciate that i hope you have a lovely day and she's like thank you i hope you have a nice day too Or you see a little dog and you stop and you say to the owner, can I pat your dog? And they're like, sure. Because like no owners say, no, don't pat my fucking dog. That's my dog. I don't really ask to pat people's dog. Yeah, because you're an abuser. You're a fucking... You don't ask to pat people's dogs. I feel like that's a kid thing. I feel like kids are the ones that ask, ask can I I please? Because like parents have told them like, you need to ask if the dog is friendly. All the feminists are rolling in their graves right now, like... (laughs) not getting consent from the dogs stopping and patting dogs and and you know just saying to the owner your dog is cute like just little bits and pieces like that and then if you want to get more ballsy like make jokes i make jokes to people all the time like 
saying little funny comments, but you don't even need to do that stuff. We're really just talking about like connecting with other human beings. Cause I think a lot of us, when we step outside the house, we have this feeling of like, I'm in my own head and I'm not like connected to the rest of the world. Like I'm not engaging with the rest mm -hmm. of the world. Mm -hmm. And you will tell yourself stories of how the world isn't engaging with you. And it's like, no, that's you. That's your fucking fault. You go first or it's, it's not your fault. It's your opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so just again, making these little comments or talking to store people like the, the person that works at a, in a retail store or at a grocery store or something, you know, how's your day going? You're trying like this is nothing to do with them. This is about you. This is you trying to show yourself that the world is warm. The world is friendly. Everyone likes you. People are kind, all of that kind of stuff. And that's only going to happen if you go outside and talk to a bunch of people. Yeah, of course. It's funny that, and it's something that we've talked about a few times that people make these sweeping statements that like, the world, the world is just going to shit these days or people these days or in these times or, you know, it's... it's we live in, t t you know, difficult times or the world's going to shit or the West is collapsing or any of that stuff. And it's like, you just make up a story, didn't you? Fine. Yeah. There are dragons in the sky. My ass can shoot dynamite. Let's just make shit up. And those stories, the, f the first ones, not the last few that you mentioned... I think get reinforced by people because you say that to people and everyone kind of just like nods their head and is like, yeah. Like, no one calls you out on it. Yeah. But I think because other people agree. People are agreeable. I think it's also just that people are agreeable sure. and they're non-confrontational and they don't want to, generally speaking, people don't want to take other people's stories or beliefs away from them. That's Because that usually true. ends up in a fight. We were like, we were at this museum recently mm. and one of like the little old lady volunteers came up to us and actually had that exact conversation kind of saying that things are taking a dark turn and yeah she's like the world is getting dark like you know hackers are everywhere and hackers are stealing money and know, you got to be scared like, of hackers like 80, so and i just let her talk and i was like okay yeah i didn't so agree i'm never going to agree with shocked. someone's lies but but you didn't question it i yeah, guess it's not my job she can believe whatever she wants to believe if 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 i see someone suffering from a story maybe i'll question them on it but generally speaking when you question someone who hasn't asked you for your opinion they're just saying their opinion mm -hmm. at you which, by the way, is a lot of people like that's how most people speak to each other. They'll oh, talk right. at the other person. Here's my opinion. It's why it's correct. And you're like, OK, well, fuck, yeah. I don't agree with that. But you haven't given me any room to have a conversation there. And I know if I have a conversation with you, it'll go the way that it has all the other times. And that's just a story, too, that I just told myself. But, yeah. but the point is that if you keep saying those things and like you almost tell yourself like, yeah, like it must be true because everyone agrees with me. Everybody yeah. thinks this way. But a lot of the time... And it's you just start like hunting for evidence that it's true. And that's what you'll do if you tell yourself that the world is unfriendly or unkind or cold or that, you know, people, how many fucking times have I heard this? Like, no, oh, it's really hard to like cold approach women at this point in time. Like, it's just, it's not a good time for cold approaching mm. or it's online dating is dead. Online dating is dying. And it's like, where the fuck did you invent that story? Or like short guys can't get laid or I'm bold. So it's hard for me. No woman would ever get give a bald guy a chance like the number of times i've heard that and it's like well that's a fucking cute little story you tell other fairy tales do you like tell about fucking rapunzel and disney princesses and other bullshit like that we're just going to spin stories now the universe lives inside my fingernail and you're all just a figment of my imagination if i say that you'll call me fucking crazy but yet people will tell themselves stories of like being bald means no woman will ever like me and it's like you're actually batshit insane like you are actually fucking insane mm. fucking insane you're believing something you have no proof for and the proof that you'll find is just shit you pulled out of your ass. Well, one time I talked to a woman and she said she had a boyfriend. So therefore, women don't get with, you know, bald guys. And then you will ignore every single piece of evidence to the contrary. Every single woman you walk past that's with a bald guy and she's really hot, you will just come up with some bullshit why that doesn't count. Even though that's literally irrefutable evidence in front of your fucking face. And you'll just say that it doesn't count. So we get pretty insane when we believe our stories, don't we? Yeah, very much Utterly so. Utterly insane. Mm-hmm. So back on the topic of smiling at strangers, <laughs> you're showing yourself that the story, you're showing yourself a more positive story. And at the end of the day, all stories are just that, they're stories. But if you're going to believe a story, why wouldn't you believe the one that serves you? And so think about how it feels when you go outside and you say, you know, the world is unkind, people are cold, like it's hard to cold approach, women won't want me to talk to them, I'd be bothering them if I hit on them, mm. strangers won't care about my jokes, like how do you feel when you tell yourself those stories you feel disconnected right you feel closed off and lonely and you feel unmasculine or if you're a woman i guess you'd also feel unfeminine like i can't connect to people i can't share my true self 
you don't feel like a human. And when you believe the story that the world is kind, how does that serve you? It serves you way more. You feel a lot better. So go with a story that serves you. If you're going to make up stories, at least make up a positive one. Like Mm. the world is your friend that serves you. Yeah. And ultimately, like when it comes back to talking to girls, then when you're giving off this like happy energy of like the world responds well to me Mm -hmm. and people are nice and this is this is fun. Women will pick up on that energy and be able to tell that you're you're a happy person and mm-hmm. that you just you just give off good vibes and of course that's attractive yeah for sure yeah and you know it's even like the little things like you see someone wearing a cool t-shirt you say yeah cool shirt like how many times do i fucking do that where someone has like a funny shirt or like you know we've seen a couple of kids wearing this now like like a little baby will have a hat that says like little man on it yeah. and the dad remember we saw one dad that had a shirt that said like big man or something sure and it was like matching it was very cute yeah it's like you can't not help but like point you point it out point at them and be like shut <laughs> you like, you like good. to point at strangers I point at strangers yeah because it's the best way to get their attention a lot of the time point. they get like they're like why, why is this, this guy pointing, pointing at me because yeah. Yeah. I'm like your shirt and you just point at them it's the best way to get someone's uh, you know attention and let's be clear when you are going out and making jokes to people or talking to people or just saying hi to someone in an elevator or just saying hey like just anything just even making eye contact and smiling Mm. don't be outcome dependent what i mean is don't expect a certain result from them or a certain response because some people won't give it to you yeah you know like sometimes i will get ignored it doesn't happen very often because most people are pretty friendly but it happens more in cities when i was doing this in my old city yeah you get ignored a lot more especially Mm. if you do it at peak hour like you know, 8 a.m. or 5 p.m. in the afternoon, lots of people are just in their own head believing their own stories. I don't have time to talk. This guy's just trying to bother me. I'm stressed. I need to get home. I hate my life. Like, you know, I look good in a suit. Like, all these lies that people would tell (laughs) (laughs) That one, too, that I look good in a suit. Yeah, yeah. Lies that people will tell themselves. And if you don't get the response, and that's the point, don't have a response. You're not doing this for them. That's you being dependent on them. That's you giving your power over to them and saying, I will only be happy if they give me the validation or the right response. No, Mm -hmm. you're doing this for you. You're doing this to be in the mood to talk to women. You're doing this to be a more social person. You're doing this because it feels good to connect to the rest of the world because it feels or because you like the person that you become when you talk to a few people. It feels good. It doesn't fucking matter what they say. You're almost talking... You're almost offering them a chance to respond. And if they don't take you up on it, that's okay. They just didn't take up, take you up on your offer. You're not trying to get a good response from anyone, really. Mm. That's almost just like the bonus on the cake. There's a, you know, I was reading a Byron Katie book last night and I'm obsessed with her. You guys, you guys already know that. But in this book, she basically talks about like, I will make, she says, I make a cup of coffee for my husband. Mm. And I fall in love with the process of making this cup of coffee. I'm doing it for me. I'm doing it because, you know, it's nice to serve my husband like that. It feels really good to put a smile on his face. And then when I bring him the coffee, if he says, no, thank you, I don't want a coffee, I'm happy because I got to be the woman that, you know, served someone else and gave some value and made the coffee and fell in love with that process. And Mm -hmm. so it's the same shit here. The same thing with when you're hitting on women, by the way. I try and get guys all the time to fall in love with the process. I say, have fun while you are talking to women. This isn't a chore or this isn't like, I need to get a bunch of numbers and if she doesn't give me a number, then she's a stuck up bitch or I'm a loser or I'm a failure. It's like, no, fall in love with the process. Fall in love with every step of it. Yeah, and there is so much to, I guess, be grateful for or appreciate Mm -hmm. when it comes to just talking to people and Mm -hmm. interacting with people. And the more social I am, or the more that I interact with the world and think like the world is a great place. Like you said, it reflects it back to you. And it's such a gift that Mm -hmm. you're alive and you get the opportunity to speak to anybody that you want and you could meet the most amazing people like that. And you will meet some of the most amazing people. Yeah. And have these incredible memories and experiences. Like that's Mm -hmm. such an exciting thing and something to look forward to. And if you kind of remind yourself of how cool that is that you like there's an infinite how much of a gift that is absolutely there's like this infinite world out there of possibilities and conversations that you could be having with people Mm -hmm. at any given moment and that's really cool and i think when you come back to that gratitude and really feel how amazing that is it makes i guess whatever you're doing and obviously in the context of like talking to women like a lot more fun when you're you're bringing in that like basically life is amazing sort of attitude yeah and really what you're talking about there is like you're talking about several things you're talking about gratitude Mm. and 
being grateful and this is something i definitely do you've heard me say this a million times where i will sit there like maybe we're sitting on a couch in a um a shopping mall or we're just on a bench in a park or something and you'll hear me say you know i'm falling in love with like i want to i want to feel love for all these people like i want to fall in love with every single person that walks past every kid every dog every woman every man every child like everyone i want to like and when i say falling in love it's like appreciating them or it's like thinking in your brain one thing that you're grateful for about them or one nice thought about them or one like loving thought of like you know maybe you see an old man and an old woman together and you think isn't it really nice that they've obviously had a long life together and you know they clearly care about each other that's fucking lovely or you see some kid like giggling with it you know his or her mother and you're like isn't a mother's love beautiful isn't that fucking lovely mm -hmm. or you see some kids doing something weird like i don't know splashing around in a fountain you know or i don't know throwing balls at each other or something and you're like man i remember when i was a kid and like i just had like no thoughts in my brain except what was currently happening that's a fucking beautiful state to be in or you see someone with a cool shirt and you're like, man, I'm glad that person chose that shirt because I got to see it. That was a nice little gift that they just gave me and the rest of the world that, that stops enough to appreciate it. So mm. it's about with every single person finding one positive thought or one nice thought or one grateful thought or one loving thought, even loving thoughts. Like you can see someone and go, I really hope they have a nice fucking life. Mm. That's something that I've worked on a lot over the last couple of years. I used to be incredibly fucking judgmental. I would be very judgmental with overweight people. I would be very judgmental with people that I felt like weren't making the most of their life. And like, how the fuck could I possibly know that? But that's what I mean, very judgmental. And so I would see maybe a guy that had bad posture or was a little overweight or something. And I'd have all these judgmental thoughts. Or I'd see a chubby chick and I'd be like, man, you know, all these judgmental thoughts. And so what I've been working on for the last couple of years, and it's, it's, oh my God, it's made a profound difference, is when I have that negative thought in my head, I will then, and now I don't even have the negative thoughts. Mm. That's, that's where, you know, you can get to that place. But for a while when I was having the negative thoughts, I would immediately replace it with a loving thought. So if I saw someone that was like, here was a thought that I would always judge. If I saw someone overweight eating a big meal, like eating McDonald's or something, I would have all these judgmental thoughts like, you know, they're fat, they're disgusting, they're wasting their life, like they're going to die, they're a burden on my taxes, like all, all of those kind of, you know, judgmental thoughts. And I would replace them with loving thoughts. Mm. So I'd go, I really hope that they enjoy that meal. I hope that that meal is bringing them peace. I hope that their life is full of joy and abundance. I hope that one day they lose weight. And if they never lose weight, I hope that's the right path for them. I hope that they live a long life. I used to have all sorts of judgmental life. I, I wouldn't want people to die, but in my head, I found some weird like ego satisfaction or like ego stroking of like, ah, oh, they're fat and they're like eating too much and they're gonna die early and I get to live for a long time and yeah. I care about my body and I'm a good person Almost because like I deserving. do. Yeah. yeah, they don't deserve to live for a long time. And it's like, how do I feel when I believe that thought? I feel fucking disconnected from the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. I don't feel good. I tell myself I feel good. I stroke my little fucking ego and like I'm jerking my little dick off. But like that doesn't feel good. Yeah. Or even if it does feel good, it's certainly not as... It's not peaceful. It's not as peaceful and it's not as intensely happy and loving as just saying I wish the best it's, for other people. Here's what it is. Whenever you have thoughts like ego thoughts that are based on like how you're prideful or you're better than... And a lot of you guys have those thoughts. I used to as well. I used to as well. I, I hear it in a lot of you and, you know, that's perfectly fine. I had so many of these thoughts and it's taken years to like let go of most of them. And I'm, I'm not perfect, but whenever you have a prideful thought, it's why I, as best as I possibly can, don't use the word normies anymore. I use it sometimes, you know, I'm trying to remove that from my vocabulary, but I used to talk about normies all the time, right? And I go like, you guys are better than normies, like fuck normies. I try not to do that anymore because when you have a thought that's based on pride like that mm. or based on ego and how you're better, you have to defend that. Mm. You have to defend that. You have to defend that weekly or daily. It has to be something you defend. You have to constantly tell yourself that you're better than other people. It's not like you say it once and then you just know for the rest of your life, yeah, I'm better, yeah. Like I never have to revisit that thought. No, you have to constantly revisit it. And anytime something, someone challenges you on that, mm. like if someone challenges your life decisions, you will then have to rationalize in your head why you're better than them, why they're full of shit, why their opinion doesn't matter. Like, you know, and if they are ever happy, you have to rationalize why they're full of shit. Mm. So anytime I would see an overweight person that was happy, I'd have to, in my mind, go like, no, they're lying to themselves. They're full of shit. Like they don't actually know they're going to die soon and they're too dumb to know. Like I have to defend that. Mm. 
And that's effort. That isn't peaceful. Mm -hmm. That isn't efficient. That isn't the abundant life that we're all going for, right? It's something you have to defend every fucking day when you step outside the house. And so letting go of a lot of these like judgmental thoughts is just so much more peaceful and efficient. And isn't that why we're all fucking here to be more efficient, to be more abundant, to have an easier life, not a more stressful life. Cause I don't know about any of you. I do know about you, but the mission is not to be more stressed. The mission over time is to be happier and more free. And mm -hmm. freedom re revolves around peace and less stress. So. Hmm. One final thing I will say, when you go out and you have those thoughts, what you're trying, the energy you're trying to give off is like loving everyone, like I said. But another way that you can look at that is like giving value. So like love everyone in your heart. And what I mean by that is like inside you, the stories that you tell or the thoughts that you think try and focus on positive stuff like you know i'm happy that this person wore that shirt i you know you see a couple hugging and you're like man i'm fucking glad that hugs exist i'm happy that those two people are happy mm -hmm. you know try and come up with some positive like thoughts and feelings but also try and give value to other people and so that can just be a smile to a stranger that can be patting a dog and saying i really like your dog that can be if you want to get to a point where you do deeper ones it could be you see a you know a couple together and you go you guys look really cute together that makes me happy or, you know, you compliment someone on their shirt or their clothes, or you tell someone that their hair looks amazing. Mm. Like, how many times do I fucking do that? Compliment someone's hair or their, their shoes or whatever. Yeah. It can also be, and this isn't just when you go outside the house. This is why I say all the time, every girl you sleep with, every person you are friends with, give praise all the time. Like, people love fucking compliments. Mm. But even when you walk outside, just try and give a little bit of value. Even if that's just something like a smile or just a, hey, how's your day going? Or you're in an elevator and you just say, hi, how's it going? Like, that's it. Just anything. Yeah. And as I've already said, like, that ends up giving back to you. You're not even giving for them. You're giving for you. Yeah, because it feels so good to give to other people and see yeah. that it has payoff. Even if it doesn't have a payoff, it's like the act of doing it just feels nice. Yeah. And now I feel better. Like, it's just winning for everyone, really. Yeah. Let's be clear. It has nothing to do with everyone else. Mm. It has nothing to do with them. This is for you. I will never tell you guys to go, like, go out and be selfless. Like, no, be selfish as fuck. I never say be selfless. You would have never heard me say that phrase. I don't mm -hmm. think I've ever said be selfless, mm -hmm. ever. I don't think I ever will. I will always say be selfish. Like you're giving for you. You're giving because it feels fucking fantastic. Mm -hmm. Because you like the person that you become when you go outside and give a ton of value and make people smile and have those sort of, or generate those loving thoughts within yourself or those positive thoughts. And if you can't get to positive loving thoughts, at least just have some neutral thoughts like some general neutral thoughts, like you see someone and instead of having a negative thought or a judgmental thought about them or how you're better or how you don't want to be like them or anything, just have a neutral thought. Literally just look at them and be like, oh, that's a guy just walking around. Mm. Oh, that guy's just wearing a shirt. Oh, that guy and that girl are just hugging. Just have a neutral thought. That's And then you can step your way up to those like positive loving thoughts. So yeah, go out, give value, love the world. Everyone is your friend. Mm -hmm. It's... You know, it seems like on the surface level, it's a strat It's like a strategy for being able to talk to more women and being more warmed up and that. But it's something so de so much deeper than that. So, I mean, even on that note, I would make this a habit. I I wouldn't just be doing this on days when you'd want to go out and talk to some women or something. Mm. And any women listening, like uh, this is absolutely a cheat code for you as well. And for a lot of women, this will help you be more assertive. Which is something that I think a lot of women struggle with to like say no or to ask for what they want without being like a you know they're worried about oh i'm gonna be a bitch or i'm gonna be nagging or i don't know how to up ruffle feathers so i think just socializing and talking to a bunch of people helps you come out of your shell mm -hmm. for anyone that's shy this is absolutely like mandatory it's such a cheat code like just say hi to people yeah. like you're basically doing little like repetitions and exposure therapy and training yourself to talk to people Mm -hmm. And you can have longer conversations if you want. I do all the time. But like even just like two sentence conversations with someone or one word, hi, just say hi to people. And they're like, hey, done. You're at least connected to another fucking human being. And something this client of mine said was, you know, he said, I will work all day. I'll go to the gym. I'll do all that. And then after all that, at like 5 or 6 p.m., when I go out to talk to women, that is usually the first person that I've talked to that day. And I was like, holy fuck. I can't imagine going like a full day without talking to someone, someone or something. I invent, at this point in time, I invent reasons that you've heard me say all the time. I'm like, I need to go outside. Yeah. Literally, I'm like a fucking dog. I'm like, I need to go outside for a walk. I need my walk. 
Like, yeah. it's been too long. And if we're not, like, speaking to each other that day, like, say I've gone out to the gym already, we will send voice messages to each other. So it feel, almost feels like you're talking. I know it's not the same thing. Even then, I have to go outside. Like, you're not even enough. I have to just go mm-hmm. talk to fucking people. I feel weird if I don't. It feels, like, so disconnected. And a lot of you just wouldn't have seen what... You haven't tried something like this. And I hadn't tried it before in the past either. This is something I've learned over the last, like, I don't know, five years. It's why it was so... It's why I took it so hard in 2020 and 2021 when you, you know, I could have talked to people, but at the time it felt like I couldn't. I was believing a story that I couldn't talk to anyone because everyone was wearing masks and hated me for not wearing a mask and, you know, police fucking harassing us. Why aren't you wearing a mask and all of that? So I believed a story that I couldn't talk to anyone and I shut myself off very much. And it was very rough for me. It was, there was a lot of suffering. There was a day where I was suicidal, as you know. And so that was just because I wasn't doing this. And a lot of you listening would have felt very depressed. A lot of you have told me you were very depressed during those two or three years because we just weren't doing this basic fundamental human fucking need of connecting to another human. Like as you navigate the universe, as you navigate this weird fucking trip that we call life, if you're doing that alone, oh my God, that's like some existential hell right there. Mm -hmm. And if you just go about your life and do all your shit and work on your business and maybe go to the gym and all of that, but you don't just say hello to another human, you start walking around outside and you feel lonely. You could be in a city of 5.5 million people and be the loneliest person in that fucking city and feel like you're surrounded by no one. It's because you're not doing this. You're not saying hello to people. So Mm -hmm. please don't be alone. Go and say hi to some people. Is there anything you want to add? Yeah. I guess the only thing that I was going to say was that if it is something that you may be a little bit nervous to do, like it's something you're not practice, it feel, feels weird to talk to strangers. Like it, it does become a habit and it gets easier and it's just a practice thing. And then once you start doing it, it just feels normal. Yeah, it does. It feels very awkward. This is what one of the, the guy who asked the question asked. He's like, will it be a bit like awkward? And someone else asked me that question mm-hmm. in the group as well. They're like, well, is it, is it okay if it feels like awkward and weird and I guess I just need to do it, don't I? I was like, yeah, bingo. Mm. Like you just have to give yourself permission to suck. You might be awkward as fuck. You probably will care about their response. You'd be like, oh my God, they ignored me. Oh my God. Mm. Like you almost have to get ignored like 20 or 30 times and you're like, oh, like nothing happened. They just didn't answer. In fact, literally nothing happened. Yeah. It's not bad or good, just nothing. Coming back to the conversation of like talking to girls, like, them not having a great reaction when you go to hit on a girl it's like not a big deal nothing happened she just didn't have a great reaction like that's it even if she tells you to fuck off which by the way just don't even worry about stuff like that it happens like once in every like 300 women that you talk to it's so unbelievably rare that they'll actually be rude to you Mm. even if you're very like forward and sexual like i like was where i would walk up to women and be like yo you're sexy still only like one in 200 would give you any sort of negative response and even then it's not negative they're just like don't call me sexy and you're like why you're sexy and they're like oh and then they walk away like that's it Mm. that's not even bad it's just she said don't call me sexy Mm -hmm. so yeah it's people are nice women are nice everybody in the world is nice everyone's your friend Mm -hmm. if this is something you guys struggle with you can sign up for coaching with me. I have group coaching and one-on-one coaching. Mm-hmm. I think, do we do we still want to push the, you still want to mention the 150? I guess I've mentioned it now, so. <laughs> it's up to you. Yeah, so obviously I have hardcore coaching, the group mm-hmm. and the one-on-one. I have, you know, those are big hardcore, like if you're actually mega serious, but for a little while we've been offering some of the $150 coaching calls, which is 30 minutes with me. We'll just sit down, shoot the shit and chat. Those have been going ridiculously fucking well, as you know. Like, holy shit. I actually, at the start, I'll be fully honest, there was a part of me that's like, can I actually help people in half an hour? No, I know I can because, like, Mm -hmm. I leave voice messages for all my clients in the group coaching program and, you know, like, half an hour in a a one-on-one coaching call, we might have, like, 10 epiphanies. and So, so like, I I know there's enough there that I can, but, like, Mm -hmm. you're still, you still have a bit of, I put a bit of pressure on myself to, like, you know, yeah, it's okay if I suck, but I still want to do a good job for people, right? Because, you know, they're sitting down with me every single fucking one of them has been amazing hmm. like amazing like they've been going fucking phenomenal like it's i'm actually surprised people have been very open and honest which was my main concern hmm. my main concern wasn't like will i be able to help them it was more like in half an hour will they be able to open up to me mm-hmm. enough to actually listen to what mm-hmm. i have to say but no they've been fucking tremendously brave the the dudes that have sat down with me i'm impressed yeah and i think as like 
it's kind of within the nature of like if somebody has reached out to you and they want to speak to you, they're probably ready to like. Yeah. They're not doing so reluctantly. Like you're not just some generic counselor where people like you should where go they don't know and, and they don't trust you yeah it's yeah. like no i know andy i've been following his content i want to speak to andy i'm going to like achieve something with and, and i and i i roughly know what andy's philosophies are and mm-hmm. you know i've watched lots of his advice so i think here's my pain point yeah they come very prepared i've been very impressed mm-hmm. like very fucking impressed yeah, yeah, I it's think been that really speaks good. to like your audience, obviously. Like, oh, you I guys are very fucking mature and like very cool people. Mm. Yeah, we've said a lot of times that it's like a very loyal, like self improvement, very positive. Except, except Dan. Who's Dan? Okay, no. No, I just literally wanted to make up a name because okay, you know how like how fucking I, funny would it be if you're a Dan listening to this and you're like, what the fuck did I do? And Andy just called me out by name, and it's like I just took a shot in the dark. I just made up a random fucking name. This, what anyone who's called Dan is listening is going like, what the fuck? I feel attacked. If there's a Dan in the audience, leave a comment. Even yeah. better if your name has Dan in it, and you're like, bro, why am I getting attacked? I just literally made that name up. But what were you gonna say? There's this guy at my jujitsu gym called Dan called yeah dan or daniel i feel like dan is the male equivalent of a karen right and daniel he's like the nicest human ever and like he sounds like a piece of shit spirit, already fuck this guy in good spirit everyone gives him a hard time like the coach will just like you guys are fucking call, bullying this poor gentleman like he's 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 pretty big he can handle it i'm gonna give this guy a cuddle little kiss on the forehead a little pat on the head i'm gonna say it's right dan every, every you know Everyone gets me hard. They just hate you because they. I think you. it's because they actually genuinely like really like him, and that's why he yep. cops it all the time. But leave, leave leave Daniel alone. So any Dan or Daniels listening, leave a comment and tell me that you feel personally attacked. But yeah, one hundred fifty dollars coaching. I I think we still offer that. So job. Yeah, we'll offer that. It's so almost it's, like a little secret. Like if you got to the end of the video and you hear about it, then yeah, we haven't really you. been pushing it much. We did an email. We did a video on the YouTube, mm-hmm. um, and I mentioned it on my blog. I think I mentioned it on the forums. Yeah, I did. Mm. But I think we're going to just leave that as a little secret thing. So if mm. anyone wants it, I think we offer it. I think we offer yeah. it for a while. Maybe that changes. Maybe it doesn't. We've talked about this. This is fucking interesting. We've had two and maybe three people so far that have done the $150 calls mm. and gone like, holy shit, dude, that was amazing. I think I want to sign up for the main coaching. And I was like, that was fucking unexpected. That, that surprised me. And to the point yeah, where I'm thinking, do we leave these calls? Uh, we've talked about this. Do mm-hmm. we leave these $150 calls up like as a decent way to bring people in for the 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 big coaching, like the proper coaching? Yeah, it certainly wasn't the intention when you first... I didn't think... I That was like the last thing started. in my... Because I was like... Your brain was like, it's going to be people who can't afford. Yeah, it's going to be people without money. But I think what it's actually meant is that it's people that maybe have thought that that's too maybe too much or that you couldn't help them with the thing that they're interested in. But then after yeah, talking that last to thing. you, that last it's thing. like... Yeah. And oh shit! Wait, Andy can help me with this. Like, it's not just about like getting late advice in the twelve week package. Like, it's yeah. We've had one guy that we talked literally only about business, mm. and he's a game developer. And he was like, "There's no fucking." He even said, "Like, there's no way that I expect you to help me with game development." And I was like, "Bro, like, let's fucking go balls deep." And so we spent like we went a bit over time. I think we spent like an hour or something. And I just told him a bunch of YouTube channels that I follow that do like game development mm. blogs. And I said like, bro, start a YouTube channel. Like he, he already had one. He just isn't pushing it. Gave him a bunch of content strategies. Mm. Um, talked about how to rev up his dev log. Um, showed him how to take himself more serious. Yeah, like just, and what else did I help? That, that guy in the couple who's in a relationship. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I don't think you're gonna be able to help me with relationships. And I was like, bro, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, Yeah, I think that's actually, it's something we've spoken about that the relationship stuff is something that you really keen to talk about it's just yeah and we've already done about 15 videos on it but yeah yeah i cut you off it's not necessarily stuff that maybe always does well like even just looking at youtube videos like the stuff about relationships does gets considerably less views yeah but i never really ever gave a fuck about that i'm going to talk about whatever i want to talk about because i feel like that's where i can give people the most value it's like what i'm currently passionate about yeah and it is something that you are really like like the relationship for sure relationship is what i care way i don't care at this point about getting laid honestly it's why i haven't done like i do content on it but Mm -hmm. it's like i do the content where you guys ask me questions and you're like hey can you talk about this hey talk about that it's not at all what i want to talk about Mm -hmm. like i don't give a fuck about getting laid Mm -hmm. once once you're at a point where you've been getting laid for long enough, you're just like, this is, it's like, would I do content on brushing my teeth? Like, no, because you've you've handled that part of your life. It's like anyone listening who owns a business and they're like, I've been working this business for 10 years. Like, you just work the business, you know what I mean? Like, 
you wouldn't necessarily want to sit there and like talk about how to make it okay maybe that's a weird mm. example because you might but yeah i feel like we've talked getting laid to death i'm still going to talk about that stuff mm. i just don't give a fuck like how many people have said like dude can you rewrite the tinder guide because it's like it's you know some bits could be updated i'm like i don't get no i don't care mm. um yeah what are we talking about 150 dollars bring people in yeah so I've had a couple of people, so relationships, I've, I've coached a dude on that and he's one of the guys that's like, bro, I'm signing up for one-on-one -on -one coaching. If this is, and I, I'm really excited about this. He wants to do couples counseling with his girlfriend. I pushed him to do that. I was like, bro, get your girlfriend on there. Like mm -hmm. I'll couples counsel both of you. Cause I gave him a, we had a coaching call that he really fucking liked. And then I gave him a voice message as well after that. And I just gave him like 15 of our biggest like cheat codes in our relationship. You know, like the couples cards, card games. Mm. Um, account of, like the weekly couples day yeah. like doing an accountability check-in he hadn't thought about any of that mm. I just gave him like a bunch of shit mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to coach him and his girlfriend on that that's going to be fucking exciting I'm so excited I've done that once before mm. I'm excited to do that going to coach this guy um, on his business his, his video game business so yeah, I feel like the $150 calls have been a decent way to for people to pick my brain and then realize oh shit this guy like can help me with this thing mm. Mm -hmm. And so we've talked about this. I'm going to at some point, I just have to get around to doing it. I'll probably do it in the next, let's say I'll do it in the next six months. Um, I'm going to redo the coaching page because right now you come to my content or you come to my coaching page and it's like, oh, this guy will get me pussy and that's it. Mm. Yeah, that's absolutely the that's vibe of literally like your all website of it. Yeah. and your coaching page especially. Yeah. Even my, I think my YouTube channel is different because there's plenty of relationship stuff and general mental health advice and all of mm. that. Yeah, and you're like tagging everything now with like the topic that. Yeah, it's I have playlists and it's nicely mm. sorted and stuff. But yeah, the blog is definitely very sexual, and the coaching page is 100% just literally, you know, I'll get you laid. Mm. One of my coaching clients that I'm working with right now, I just mentioned to him that like, oh, someone's just joined the group and you know he wants business advice, and the guy literally like was taken back and he goes like, oh, why is he talking to you, Andy, for business advice? And I was like, yeah, if if he's saying that, that means I'm clearly not getting that across in my content that you know i'm obviously not giving any value for business and i've talked little bits and pieces but that is definitely not something i've done much of mm. so if you guys have any questions on business or content creation or how to like 10x your current income or how to start a business one of the dudes that i'm coaching right now um he's like three weeks into the coaching with me he he was like andy literally all i want is for you to teach me how to build a coaching business mm. and he's already had four clients no i think five in like his first three weeks that's been a fucking joy because i get to see him in three weeks have more clients that it took me like three years to get that's really exciting. maybe two years yeah, yeah. which is fucking crazy mm -hmm. so i think yeah if you guys have any content that you want me to talk about or any questions or anything like business related definitely relationship related super passionate about that mental health and depression i've mm -hmm. talked about those things lots of times though mm -hmm. oh, um yeah. but especially relationship and business yeah even things like marriage and fatherhood um, I'm going to do a separate podcast in the next couple of weeks, I think, or maybe I'll do it as a YouTube video on fatherhood, mm. like some little bits of advice for fatherhood. And you might go like, Andy, you don't even have kids. What the fuck are you talking about? But just, just wait for that. It'll be, I, I believe it'll bring you some value. Mm. So yeah, I'm super passionate about all that sort of stuff. If you guys have any questions on business or relationships, leave them in the comment below. If your name is Dan and you felt called out, leave that in the comments below. Um, I had a good friend called Dan, so I love Dan's. Dan the man, Dan the stand. Uh, if you want $150 coaching, you know, 30 minute call, we usually go a little bit over time, but I probably shouldn't advertise that, but whatever, I'm a shit businessman. Um, leave it, you know, just send an email for that. Um, mm -hmm. Contact me and we'll set that up. If you want the hardcore coaching, funnily enough, I think at this point, <laughs> maybe for like the hardcore coaching, I obviously sit down with people for a free call, but that's more if they're serious. So if you're not sure if you want the coaching, probably yeah. just pay for a $150 one and like see how that goes. Yeah. And maybe I can do something like, I'm not sure if I'll do this. Mm. No, I don't want to do this. I was going to say, if you sign up for the hardcore coaching, I can refund you the $150. Like, I don't know. I'm in two minds about that. I'm in two minds about that because I don't want to like open up too much of my calendar. It already feels like I'm spread thin with my calendar and how many calls mm -hmm. and podcasts and stuff I'm doing. So at least for right now, I'd prefer that the $150 call stays paid and I don't refund that to you if you sign up for the coaching. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway, anyway, whatever, whatever. This None of this is set <laughs> in stone. I'm figuring this out. And that's a, 
a good place to leave it, I think, is like, you don't have to be perfect with anything. I'm clearly not perfect with my coaching business, am I? I'm not perfect with this content. This podcast went all over the place. Like, Mm -hmm. please don't think you have to be perfect with anything. I'm not. I never have been. I never will be. I'll never tell you guys to be. Just aim for 1% improvement every day. Take those little baby steps. Make a little bit of progress. Go out there. Give as much value as you possibly can. Love people. Talk to people. The world is your friend. This is a big list. And and finally? Finally. What do we want to end on? What you always end on? Vaginas are pretty good. And go out there and crush your goals. Go out there and crush your goals. <laughs>